So some of the major objectives we will be covering in this webinar today is what is CFD and how it fits into the picture completely. So it is not meant to replace the procedures, experimental procedures that we have available in the industry today. It is only meant to coexist with them. So it is an add on. And then to understand the correlation of it, we will also see how CFD is utilized in the industry in terms of helping industries for computational time. And we'll see the trend going forward as well. So what is CFD? To be able to understand that, if you look at the physics, like I said, we have experimental fluid dynamics, we have analytical fluid dynamics, and we have then we have computational fluid dynamics. So it is not meant to replace anything. It is only meant to coexist as an add-on. To understand what is CFD, we understand how it falls into the picture completely. So moving on, we will be looking at experimental fluid dynamics, which is the first portion of the physics, and then how it correlates with analytical fluid dynamics, that is AFD, and then we will go to CFD. So what is experimental fluid dynamics? So we might wonder with the growth and use of computer modeling and simulation supported by all the advanced computational resources we have today, why would we require a need to conduct experiments to investigate fluid mechanics experimentally? From background, I have always been an experimentalist in the industry before I have dealt with computational fluid dynamics, and we will see why. Because there are a lot of fluid flow characteristics that are difficult to simulate or understand stand due to the complexity of geometry sometimes because we are not dealing with the straight duct at all times. It is complex geometries. Sometimes it is just the turbulent nature of the liquid itself because these days we are using green liquids that is environment friendly fluids and not harmful gases. So they can be turbulent in nature. We have to learn a lot about their nature, their characteristics. And for that, only experiments can shed light on. So some of the steps involved in EFD are the following. We first build a prototype device that is under study at a particular point. So in an aircraft industry, generally they would build one portion or one prototype of the wing and they send it for experimental studies. Earlier, that was the first step. These days they replace that or they tend to lean towards CFT. So we will see how we do that. But in EFT, they build a prototype device and they put it in an appropriate test facility. And then measurement of some properties, that is whatever analysis or studies we are targeting are measured using measurement equipment like thermocouples or pressure sensors and so forth. So if you look in the diagram on the right hand side, there is a picture of a shock tube. A shock tube is used to simulate effects of explosion. It is highly used in industry sometimes, uh, also in a lot of research facilities. I know a lot of universities in India has shock tube. I worked with shock tube. Uh, they are meant to study the effects of combustion of rocket fuels uh, as an application, sometimes for military applications, also for aerodynamic flow studies under a wide range of temperatures and pressures, hypersonic flow studies, etc. So shock tube is one experimental facility that is used. But what happens is a lot of these shock tubes are extremely expensive to run for every test. And so the use of it is declining. Moving towards analytical fluid dynamics. What is that? So in AFD, what happens is we try to solve mathematical equations. They are usually in differential or integral form. They are governing around that flow study. So for example, these days in this age, when we have a lot of computers, one of the major things is we are using probably a one centimeter square area chip, and it has a lot of chips inside that. So electronic systems. And to cool these electronic systems, we require a very good heat dissipant and we are looking into liquid. So there is a procedure called pool boiling, which is being researched right now in the industry today to be used as a liquid cooling agent. And that is highly studied under EFD, experimental fluid dynamics and not EFD, because a lot of equations are difficult. So in EFD, if the physics is simple and the governing equations are simple, then we can obtain an exact solution. And so there is no error. Like if you see the drag relation over here, 
flow over the flat plate, that is a simplified version of drag over a flat plate. So if you can simplify the physics and simplify the equations, we will get an answer with no error. But if you think about it in real time, these equations are not always that simple. Or most of problems in the industries are not simplified version, they are complex. And so the use of AFD analytical fluid dynamics is not that trendy. So some of the things that we ask when we are approaching with AFD is, is the mathematical equation available for the physical phenomena? So for pool boiling, the equations are not standard yet. They are still being researched and still being built upon. Then is mathematical method available for solving these equations if they are available? And then can I make assumptions to simplify the governing equations? So if you can answer all of these questions when you're using AFD method, then probably it is a good method to use. But in most cases, it is not so. So then we approach what is CFD? Now, CFD is a numerical approach. It is called an approximation approach, but it is very, very close to the real-time values that we see in the industries. So while using CFD, one of the three numerical methods are used. So we will not go into the depth of the methods, but they are either finite difference method, finite element method, finite volume method. We will cover a little about finite volume method in the further slides. But what you need to understand is any of these numerical approaches, what happens in CFD is that entire geometry, like if you see in the picture in this slide, this is the shape of an airfoil. So it is technically an entire wing. But that geometry is split into grids or into smaller subdomains, smaller geometries. All the governing equations we are targeting are solved in that particular subdomain, in that particular small geometry iteratively, and a solution has come up. So that is what CFD is, and it is very, very close to what we see in the real-time flow values. Now, CFD is increasingly being used today in a lot of industries. So if this is one use of CFD in a particular industry, now this is a beverage dispenser. CFD is being increasingly used, but we as consumers, we would have to see if CFD can be used in every single industry. Is it feasible? So in beverage dispensers, what happens is we either know there are two companies, Pepsi or Coca-Cola. If you open a beverage dispenser, there are a lot of internal tubings or tiny tubings, and they have no particular alignment or no particular structure. They are just fitted in there to reach the destination that is the nozzle where you can get your drink from. So then you would wonder, is this a good idea to use CFD in this particular area? In most cases, not so. It can be used. CFD can be used in any industry, in any platform, but is it feasible? So you answer these questions. The interior components, that is the internal tubes, they are not of a particular length. They have no definite arrangement inside the machine. And in that case, using CFD would not be a wise decision because in CFD, geometry recreation is of great importance as we go through the flow paths and those the geometry creation will give us the results that we are looking at so we also look into cost consideration along with the turnout time if for a small equipment we are using over two weeks of time to give a flow result to the customer they are probably not going to overlook cfd results and go into manual results efd experimental based results so in this case of beverage dispenser use of cfd is not as critical now, the extent of CFD usage in commercial aircrafts, this is where we will be looking at. So this is the Boeing 757 aircraft. And if you see all those green areas that are highlighted in green name selections, they are the areas where they have maximum CFD penetration. And the design of the wing tip, and the wing body itself, is extremely important for any commercial manufacturing uh, company. So, And then we have the green name selections. Those are the areas where you have semi CFD penetration, so it is not much, but there is. And then you have the red areas. Those areas present future opportunities for CFD capability. And in this picture, I'd like to highlight one portion that is called the positive pressure outflow relief valve. And the reason I highlighted it is because we are going to use these three procedures, that is EFD, AFD, and CFD, in analyzing the outflow valve. So it will help us understand why CFD is of growing importance today. And it will give you an idea of whether you want to get into CFD expertise. So what is the outflow valve, outflow positive pressure relief valve? Um, if you look at this 
picture, you see a soda bottle. The aircraft or the fuselage body itself is a pressurized body. And the reason being the outside pressure is so high. If you get negative pressures, the entire fuselage will be crushed. To prevent this from doing so, the air inside the fuselage or the aircraft body is pressurized. And you have a tiny door at the bottom or the tail end of the aircraft. That is called the outflow valve. It is like a door. When the pressure inside the body of the aircraft is very high and it has to be released outside, this door or the outflow valve will open up. A little air will be released and then it is closed. That is the main purpose of the outflow valve. And now why are we looking at it? Because we are going to analyze it using EFD, AFD, and CFD. So the first thing when you look at EFD, some of the factors that you would consider are what is the first step? We would be actually creating or manufacturing an outflow valve uh, to be tested in a lab environment. Going from there, the test would involve passing air through the valve at various speeds, also called the flow rates. Now factors to consider for EFD. One is the temperature consideration of airflow. So the temperature inside a lab environment has to be highly monitored because we need the air to be flowing at a particular temperature, which has an effect on the pressure also. Then at different altitudes, when the aircraft is climbing and also during descent, the altitudes change. These altitudes have a direct impact on the pressure of the atmosphere. And that has a direct impact on the pressure within the cabin, which affects the flow through the valve. Then we have the effect of angle of attack, Mach number on the atmospheric pressure. And then we're looking at the experimental cost and the test equipment. So considering all of these factors, we can see how trying to control the atmosphere and the temperature and all of the factors inside a lab is going to be a little difficult to replicate them exactly how it would be in real time. And so that is why uh, analysis of the outflow valve using EFD is not completely uh, foolproof. So we cannot rely completely on the results of these experiments unless it is backed up by one of the other two methods. So moving forward, we will approach this problem from AFD standpoint and we'll see if that works or not. So the three main equations uh, we would be using for most flow analysis would be conservation of mass, momentum, energy. The other three basic principles that we will always follow. Now these three principles are used to correlate to the analysis that we have under study. So in our case, it is the outflow valve, and which means we are looking at the pressure inside the aircraft cabin and the flow capacity through the valve. These are the two main things you'll be considering. Now, before you get from mass momentum energy straight to your results, that is mass flow through the valve, if you see the three boxes in the middle, that is effect of altitude on pressure, on atmospheric pressure, you have the effect of Mach number, and you have the effect of angle of attack. It is not easy when you have a lot of dependent factors in the middle to have your equations directly reflect that, which means the use of EFT in any project depends on the complexity of equations. The feasibility will depend on how complex your equations get. When they get more complex, the way you make your assumptions also have to be carefully assessed. For example, we can make assumptions of incompressible flow or compressible flow. We can uh, make assumptions in certain physical methods, which we will see later on. But the more assumptions we make to simplify the equations, we will be losing a part of the physics, uh, which is necessary for our project which means that AFD has more drawbacks in this particular project than it has gives us our results. So it is complex to calculate the correlation of dependent factors on the mass flow capacity of the outflow valve over here. So then let's try to approach it from the CFD standpoint. Moving forward, so modeling of the outflow valve using CFD. What is CFD actually? It is computational fluid dynamics, but one of the major components behind CFD is the grid or the mesh generation. Uh, so if you look at what we have right here, it is the entire solution is cut into portions called grids or domains, that is subdomains, and the solution is computed over them iteratively. So if you see the portion over here, that is one mesh. 
Uh, and it is important to have a good mesh because your end results will always reflect uh, the quality of your mesh. Uh, also, the stability of your solution that you get will be reflective of the mesh quality that you generate. So it is an important critical step of any CFD project. So when we look at the picture on the right hand side, those are the results that I was able to obtain from this project from the alpha valve. It is a CFD simulation. The picture on the left hand side is a total pressure contour. And what this shows is that the pressure inside the aircraft cabin is high. That is all the red portion and the pressure is high for within the valve and it reduces as it moves into the atmospheric pressure. So that is what the left hand portion means. The right hand is a Mach number contour, which means it is the velocity, velocity of, or the Mach number of the air inside the cabin is low, and it becomes higher as it moves outside into the atmosphere. The reason I showed this picture is because it gives you an idea of how well you can visualize uh, certain flow characteristics that are important for you to make a decision on the outflow valve, and CFD is very helpful in doing so. So. This is an overview of why we need CFD. Now, if you look at all of them together, in the experimental method, it is capable of being the most realistic, and that is because you have real-time data. You can keep an airfoil in a wind tunnel, you can flow air over it, and you will get data. So that is most realistic. But what are the disadvantages? You need equipment. You need a wind tunnel. Uh, the measurement difficulties, high operating costs, and every equipment requires calibration. So there would be some amount of human error also over there, which has to be considered. Moving to the analytical method, it is clean, simple in formula, but it is not always the case. So disadvantages are it is restricted to linear problems. Most of our industrial problems are not linear. Then you're restricted to simple geometry and they're difficult to compute when you have a lot of dependent factors like we saw in the alpha valve. They are difficult to compute. That is why we have CRD, which is the numerical method. So there is no restriction to linearity, able to handle irregular geometry. So if there is complex geometry, whatever it is, if it gets the physics complicated, but it is able to handle that very well. It is low cost as compared to running tests on wind tunnels, high computational speed and less time compared to experimental methods, some of them. But there are a couple pros and cons to it as well. So the cons are there are boundary conditions that those are the initial values that you need to assign. Sometimes if there are too many dependencies and interconnections, you have to make a very wise decision based on AFD on what kind of boundary conditions you want to supply it or the initial values you want to supply for your problem. Then there are certain round of errors as well. Those are in the values that you obtain. Uh, but we see from here here that CFD is a very powerful tool and it is being used widely. So in our role of CFD in the life of a product, this is where we understand how CFD is being used in the industry. What is the chain? So the first thing, for example, let us consider an example of when an airline approaches an aircraft manufacturing company. So let's say Airbus or Boeing. Now the steps involved is the airline approaches, or they are also called stakeholders, they approach with the concept or requirements, which usually looks like an aircraft that carries a certain number of passengers. That is the concept of operations. Then what happens is the engineers at the manufacturing company, they get into the design mode and they have a high level design, which is usually released as a drawing document. Uh, and they use CAD, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, CATIA, and so forth. So they'll release a high level design document. Moving further, they have to validate this high level design using Using detailed design. This is where CFD, MATLAB, CAE softwares, computer-aided engineering softwares and tools are used to help validate the CAD model that was developed earlier. So this is where CFD is used. Moving forward, we have once it is validated and everyone is in agreement, they develop this hardware and the software and they implement it. So moving forward, once they have implemented and actually manufactured in a factory, they would start testing each system thoroughly. 
Each system is verified through EFD and then it is compared. For example, the wings fuselage control systems. These are some very common systems that are individually tested and then they are integrated wholly into an aircraft. So system verification and deployment. So when CFD is used on the left hand side of the chart where there is detailed design, that is a different implementation of CFD as compared to on the right hand side. The right hand side is also called certification, which is different from design. So what happens in certification is the system, for example, the wing is verified through experimental fluid dynamics through experiments and then they are compared with the CFD to check the validity. So this is called airplane certification. Uh, there are a lot other documents and processes involved but this is how CFD is used on the right hand side of the chart as well. So it has both implications. And then the final step of, of any system product is going to be system validation, operations, and maintenance. So this means that we have already deployed the aircraft to the customer. So this is going down and the top. So the left-hand side of the chart of the V-shaped diagram is called the decomposition and definition. This is where a concept or a requirement is developed. It is developed into design, high-level design, then a detailed design, and it is defined completely. And the right-hand side is when you have a document approval. It is developed, it is implemented in a factory, it is integrated into the entire aircraft, and then certification processes go on, and then the document is approved. So this is how CFD plays into the life of an aircraft of any product. There is a V-shaped diagram. Okay, so moving to the trend of CFD today in aerospace industries. So this is the size of the CAE market. So CAE is computer aided engineering. There are a couple softwares in there. There is finite element analysis. There is CFD. Multibody dynamics is when you are looking at interconnected bodies in motion and you want to see how they move. Then there is optimization sim simulation. We use Simulink these days as well on a large scale. So all of these softwares, they are being highly monitored and used today. Right now, they say it's reported to be 8.1 billion in size. And by 2027, they seem to go up to 15.0 billion. And uh, at the rate at what it is being used in the sectors it is being used in today, it only is likely to go up. I do know that they are highly being high CFD as a software is being highly used in electronic companies for thermal management because we are in the age where we are using a lot of computers and computational resources are being uh, highly, highly used. And so they do tend to use CFD on a large scale in those industries. So these are the final steps within a CFD program. In any CFD project, we are going to be looking at certain steps. The first one is geometry creation. Uh, it is one of the major steps and it's very important. So given the option, it is often better to create geometry specifically for your CFD simulation. And the reason being, for example, for flow analysis, we can simplify the geometry at certain times by filling in sections of bolts and nuts because those bolts and nuts are part of the structure that is not necessary for fluid flow analysis because we need smooth surfaces and so you can fill in those areas. That is an, a tiny example of how you can simplify geometry at certain times. Also you have to be able to create watertight geometry that is geometry with no leaks so then it will be able to handle a good mesh and mesh which is the next step we will be going through. It is very critical for the result that you will be looking at the quality of the mesh. So create mesh. Now there are a couple types or kinds of mesh that you can create. I've just named two over here, structured and unstructured. So grid generation, it is very critical part within CFD simulation process as it not only dictates dictates simulation time, but also the accuracy of the result. Now, why is that grid generation? Like we saw earlier, the entire domain or the entire geometry is cut into subdomains. And those subdomains is where your governing equations are iteratively simulated over. I would also call that as control volume, also called cell. This is where we use finite volume method. Uh, it is the process of dividing domain into smaller subdomains. Now, the domain of interest should be completely filled. 
which means you have to be careful when you create in the picture that I'd shown on slide nine, we had a small domain. We had used tetrahedral cells there. So it is important when you have a structured grid that they are connected with each other at the vertices and it is clean. So that is a good quality mesh. They must all connect with each other at vertices. So the third part is physical models. Now I'll give you an example of what kind of models uh, we would be looking at. So these are couple porous media is very when you want to calculate or analyze, simulate a pressure drop, porous media is used there. Radiation is one physical model that is highly used in a section in an aircraft called the wheel well. And in the next slide, there is a picture of the wheel well. I'll show you, I'll explain a little more over there. But for right now, these are some physical models that you can choose from when you are going through a CFD problem, looking at what you want to look at. Uh, sometimes if radiation is one of the major components there and the others are minor you can switch off the other physical models and you can concentrate only on radiation that is also a possible option then you have boundary conditions so boundary conditions like i said those are some of the initial values that you have to be wise uh, when you predict that or when you give that as an input value right only then you can have an output value so when we choose these input or initial values, we have to be wise in knowing the physics. So if, for example, an airplane at ground level has one particular altitude and has one particular temperature, has one particular air pressure. So those are going to be your initial values for an outflow valve analysis. Then we have the convection scheme on the solver type. So there are a couple solvers that we can use from, but I think the default one is simple. And it is called simple because it is assumed that fluid flows from high to low pressure. So that is one solver type. And from the types, you can choose depending on the analysis of the problem, which type you want. For example, if there is a pressure and velocity couplant, you are looking at uh, those two characters in specific. You can try to stabilize your solution by choosing the best solver type among what you have. So that is a little about the solver types that we have. So once you have done all these five steps, it goes into a solution part where you iteratively solve it, like over 9,000 iterations usually, for an alpha valve, you have 9,000 iterations where it will converge for sure. Once you go through that, you have the post-processing. Post-processing, you have contour plots, you have line plot, vector plot. And the picture that we I showed you earlier for the alpha valve, that was total pressure plot and the Mach number plot. So those, that is how a fluid looks. We also have animation, something that we have within the CFD, and it is also being completely developed by ANSYS these days. So this is the wheel well. If you see the red circle over here, when these wheels during takeoff and when they actually go into the compartment and are sealed within, the temperature of these wheels are around almost nine degrees Fahrenheit or above. So the major component that you're looking at over here is radiation of the wheels. Everything else is relatively compared to radiation is very minute. So a lot of times simulators and a lot of engineers switch off other physical models and they choose to concentrate solely on radiation also to understand how far this radiation affects the surrounding structure within that compartment wheel well section so this is an example of a physical model of radiation being used in this particular analysis of the wheel well uh, so this is an overview of how cfd is being used in the industry i hope this gives you an idea of the significance of it and how useful it is in helping design a lot of cutting edge technology these days